to the virtual groom room. My name is Jack, your host, and today I'm bringing you another shaving video. My choice of soap today is going to be new on the channel, and this is from Southern Witchcrafts. This soap is called Lysanthropy. The marketing behind this brand is really, really interesting to me. She specializes in specifically dark scents, so you won't get scents that are citrusy or bright or anything like that. She specializes in making scents that are... I would say somewhat polarizing. This definitely won't be for everyone, these sorts of scents. Um, the scent on this are, has notes of fir tree, lilac musk, mildew moss, Egyptian jasmine, palo santo, white sage, and ozone. It creates a very aromatic, I mean, it's dark, I'm not gonna deny that. But there's way more elements to it just being danky and dirty. It's a really, really nice scent. The way I would describe it is imagine like a, a garden in the summer. Actually, a garden from the transition from summer to autumn. Um, the reason it's called Lysanthropy, basically, um, I'll read you a bit of an excerpt from the product page. It's kind of cool. Transcending human barriers through an animalistic transformation in an aromatic midnight garden under a full moon. It's pretty cool. Like I said, her marketing is very dark, very cool. You can see the cool kind of like moon here with the, with the wolf. Transformation into a werewolf, stuff like that. I think that's the purpose behind it, but I'm looking forward to using this. This is a vegan-based soap, and that kind of goes on to the topic of today's discussion. Let me show you the gear. I'm going to get loaded up here and uh, we will then um, kind of, I guess, get to the topic. So I'm going to go back to the coral reef soap. Soap. Coral reef brush. Um, these really beautiful gel tip knots. And I'm going to be using my charcoal goods level two with the three inch hammered handle in stainless steel. Let's get loaded up here. I don't know how much I need to load on this soap. What I do know, however, is this brush holds onto water. So I kind of want to get rid of that because it can be good at oversaturating leather. So I'm literally going to squeeze the water out of this. It's still very wet, although I've squeezed the majority of the water out. So we're going to go with that, like this. Get a good load. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I want it to be quite pasty because I want to, you know, consistently add the water here. Don't know what sort of lather this makes. I've never used it. I've not test lathered it or anything. So we're going to kind of go. Oh, it's very, it's opening up now, the scent. It's very, very nice. Quite herbaceous. I think that might be the sage. That's a lovely scent. It really, really is. So I'm going to overload this a bit because I don't know what this brush is going to do to the soap. I've had experiences with this brush where it does hold on to lather. Well, not so much that it holds on to lather. It holds on to water, therefore oversaturate the lather. And I really, really don't want it to do that. So I'm going to give this soap a, a fair crack. I, I bought this with my own money. Like I said, I'll always tell you when I've not bought something with my own money. I bought it from Magards. I have two more over there as well that you will be seeing at some point. All three very different scents and um, I believe Southern Witchcraft made in Georgia. I think it's Tucker, Georgia, from what I read. I've seen a few guys use it and a few guys really like it, so I think wrong, the scents aren't going to be for everyone, but I like an artisan that's, you know, willing to reach out there a little bit and try something different, and I think she has, so. Okay, I think that's good. But what, that might be overloaded, I, it might not be. I guess we'll find out. So um, let me get my face wet and we'll start lathering. I forgot the towel again, give me a sec. Every single time I forget that damn towel. But I have a cool towel on the way. Um, DK, you're a bit of an enabler, and I, I bought one of the Lancaster Razorworks towels. I was looking at them for a long time. They look lovely. Very, very soft. And he's a good guy. Andre is a good guy. 
I've spoken to him a few times in the past. And it's always been a pleasure. There we go, face is adequately wetted. Let's get the... It really opens up. The lilac is definitely present. The musk is certainly present. It's a very well blended scent. And I can already tell when applying this, this is going to make a good lather. Okay, I think we're going to go with that. Wash off the top of the soap here, as we always do. Okay, so the discussion for today is something we touched on in the first episode of the Razor Burn podcast, but I want to bring it here and kind of summarize it. I've been enjoying these uh, conversations we've been having lately, and I've been really, really enjoying the dialogue in the comments, so keep that up. The topic of today's discussion is tallow versus vegan. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because this is a vegan soap, and you'll notice from me, more often than not, I'm using a tallow base. And why, why is that? I think, so let's, let's start with the ingredients, right? So if you look at a tallow base, ingredients are way more varied. You can use a lot more. Vegan soaps really limit the ingredients you can use in a soap. And by ingredients, I mean super fats. If you're looking to super fat out your soap, there are some vegetable bases or vegan bases that can do it pretty well. But it's more often than not, not the case, you know? You're not gonna get this really fatty residual layer on your skin, which I consistently quote when I use a good soap. But, I've found that good tallow bases have that, and that comes down to super fats. You can use anything in a tallow base as a super fat because you're not limited by the ingredients you can choose. But vegan, obviously, you can't use any animal-based products. No milks. No, I mean, milks is a, milks are a very easy way to super fat soap. No milks. Of course, no tallow. No lanolin. So you're, you're pretty limited in terms of stuff you can use. And don't get me wrong, I don't think it matters too much per se because the, the vegan soaps work. But at the same time, there is, a, there is a clear difference there. And it's not because of tallow versus vegan. It's mainly due to the fact that you can use a more um, varied ingredient base. And that ingredient base allows you to super fat the soap. This is making a very nice lather actually. We're gonna really take the time here after the 10 minute wet shave challenge. <laughs> Just keep it going. So yes, um, so the, there's a clear difference in ingredients. Now the perception of this is a lot of the community don't use those vegan soaps because they're construed as inferior. Why would I agree? Like a vast majority of the case, they are not, they aren't as good. I think it's silly to not use them because ultimately they get, they're going to shave you um, what, what you're getting from them. Frankly, um, yeah, I, I, I'd argue and say they're probably not as luxurious. Does that matter? Have you ever used a vegan base, honestly? Well, I mean, highly regarded vegan bases like this one or Zingari's or HSSC, CK6. Have you ever used them and said, you know, this, uh, this lacks something the rest of my soaps have? Probably not.
I think a lot of it ties into the fact that they're not widely used or widely regarded because they're not quote unquote luxury. And excuse my French here, but that's bollocks because they're very, very good. Tell me this isn't a luxury soap. This is a beautiful soap. Really beautiful, in fact. This is one of the nicest vegan soaps I've used, I can tell you that much. And this is 16 bucks. I mean, that, there's no tallow soap. Maybe Sterling, Sterling, again, I think Sterling's an outlier. It's an incredibly good value product. Based on performance versus cost. What a lot of you don't realize as well, it's harder to make a really good lather with a beard. I'm not using that as an excuse, but I don't have the surface area to play with a lot of people do. So the beard hinders me slightly. So I've adopted my own way of lathering. We're not done yet, trust me. So let's, let's continue on with this discussion then. So the perception is they're not, they're not as good, so therefore I don't use them. I wouldn't do that because what you're doing is your, there's never any point in limiting yourself. What I mean by that is, unless you're a vegan, or unless on ethical grounds, you don't want to use something, um, there's no reason why you shouldn't use it, because everything is good, vegan, tallow, or whatever. Is the case today that we have such a competitive market that if these items aren't good, frankly, I don't think no arson would be around because they just get overshadowed. Now this creates a wonderful lather, I have to say. Very voluminous, but it's dense at the same time. I mean, it has good density. So yeah, don't, don't uh, limit yourself because it's not, it's not tallow, it's not fashionable. It's not quote unquote luxurious because frankly, I can guarantee you'll find some scents and some vegan soaps that you will absolutely love. And once you find them and you start using them, the fact that they're vegan starts to not matter very much, frankly. Um, because ultimately they all give a decent shave and at the end of the day that's just what we're doing here. There are differences in qualities, I would say. I'd say, um, in fact, I, I give some positive qualities to vegan soaps. To truly dial in, they're much easier to work with because of the lack of super fats. I'd also say they're less finickety, generally, vegan soaps. To, to get them to that consistent point, you need to put in a lot less work. So th those are two advantages. We're just going to add some water in now and start the shave. So I'm painting water. I've already got the, the volume. This is very nice. Don't sleep on Southern Witchcraft, people. Look at that. Can you see how glossy that is? Wow, lovely. Really, really lovely. Do the lather test here. Very wet, well hydrated, like I like it. I mean, look, I can't complain about this lather. This is a beautiful lather. This is exactly what I like for the lather. It's dense, it's glossy. What's that to complain about? Yes, it doesn't taste, contain tallow. But it's not taken away from my experience at all. So remember that. This stuff um, builds very easily. I'd say I'm happy with that. So let's smooth it down a little bit more and we'll get to our shave. I want to add a little bit more water on that left side.
But I showed also my 10 minute wet shaving challenge. You don't need to do this. You can just pick it up and go. That's the beauty of this. If you have the time and you want to put the time into doing it, by all means, it's your time, you use it how you see fit. And that goes for not wanting to take loads of time too. Because if you said to me, I have a busy life, I don't want to lather for 15 minutes like I have, <laughs> I won't blame you. But I get a lot of satisfaction out of this. And this lather is absolutely lovely. Okay, charcoal goes level two with the same persona we used in our challenge video. There's a little bit of blade fill. But not something that's unmanageable. So lovely self. So another big difference in tallow versus vegan. I'd say the good tallow soaps are generally more expensive. So if you're looking to save money, you can get some fantastic vegan options at an affordable price. This is $16 for four ounces, which is about $4 an ounce. Which is good for me. There are some people that live and die by the ounce, price per ounce. For me, if it's good, it's good. And uh, I get it if you have certain guidelines. But if it's good, I'll give it a go, you know. That's no problem. Let's rinse off the face. That's a great first pass. Really nice protective layer. But I'd be lying to you if I said it was something similar to milk steak or something like that, because it's not. But it's doing what I needed to do and it's shaving me well. So I can't complain with this. So much so. <laughs> I did overload this a bit. But that's okay. So I get a second pass of lathers that are beautiful. I often overhydrate soap. And frankly, I don't see the problem because it just makes makes it a bit thinner. I won't say I've overhydrated this, but I, I regularly do because I had so much water. But it doesn't really make a difference. Ultimately, if your lather looks shit and it gives you a good shave, it just does not matter. <laughs> Coming from me, the guy that fucking lathers for 15 minutes, but it, it really, it just doesn't matter. Wow. 
some really, really good slickness. More than I would ever need. Remember, people have amazing shades with Presso. It's really important to remember I've used Presso. And based on what I based on what I normally use, I call it par, like it's fine. But there are some people that's all they use. And they're getting shaved as good as mine. It's a very nice shave. Great soap. I, I, I recommend this stuff. So yeah, the tallow versus vegan argument is a difficult one um, for a lot of people, but my takeaway, she use everything. Use what you like to smell of. Don't let the ingredients of the soap, unless you're allergic to something, define your purchases because more often than not, it's just going to give you a good shave anyway. Plenty of residual slickness left behind, as I would expect. See how this razor deals with this bit because I find lots of lots of razors are quite uncomfortable for me here. Did a good job. Not there. I felt a bit tuggy. So I'd like to know what you guys um think about this subject because this is a contentious subject I would say some people feel very strongly about this I wouldn't say I feel strongly I feel strongly in the sake of just try everything because pretty much everything is good nowadays oh that's a lovely scent there's something very warm about this scent wow There's something quite Coles Pond-esque to me. Could be the moss. Cool, okay. That's a uh, kind of... First off, stop eating stuff. Just gonna clean the brush here. So I'm gonna be uh, recording some videos in England when I'm over there. Kind of unsure what I'm gonna bring. I might have a very special razor with me. So I will be in the process of testing that. So you guys get the exclusive s scoop on that, <laughs> so to speak. I love these Fat Dom Rob handles. I also love his silver coin as well. I love I love my bro Melton, but I'd much prefer if he had a silver coin. Not a huge fan of like the brass color. So moral of the story with this brush for me in terms of the learning process was don't overload, well overload a little bit because the, it does kind of soak up a lot of lather, but as well as overload, get as much of the water out of it as you can. Okay, let's rinse off the face. 
Wait till the water actually gets cold because it's just lukewarm. And then we're going to use uh, one of Zingari splashes. Okay. I can tell you already that this post shave is going to be fantastic. Let's dry it down. Yeah, it's, that's lovely. I mean, I can't complain about that post. No tightness. Like a smooth, velvety skin effect. I cannot complain in the sliders. Wonderful shape. Okay. We're going to use what my, this is my favorite splash I've used from Zingari so far. This is aftershave splash, alcohol free splash number two. This is a very, very good splash. Zero alcohol burn, because there's none. Absolutely chock-a-block full of skin food. That's what I like, that's my thing. Okay, let's do a recap of the stuff we use and I'll let you guys go, and I will see you later in the week. Lysanthropy, Southern Witchcrafts. Fantastic soap base, um, really unique range of scents. If you're a darker scent fan, Go to Southern Witchcraft, you'll really like them. Good value, 16 bucks for four ounces. For me, that's good value anyway. There isn't much really like that around at the moment. My razor of choice was the Charcoal Goods Level 2 with the hammered handle, which is three inches long. Yeah, I, I really like that razor. There's a bit more blade fill than anything I, I generally use, but it's not too much blade fill where it's difficult to use. My Coral Reef brush, which if I recall, a guy on the channel named this, and uh, I forgot your name, I'm incredibly sorry, but you named this brush and it's called Coral Reef because of you. Really nice brush, wonderful V4 28mm tip in there. And for our post, as the lid drops off, for our post I used Alcohol Free Splash number two. Okay, that is our shave today guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video couple of plugs before we go. Um, this is the last few days coming into my 500 subscriber giveaway. If you're new around here and haven't had a look at that, go over a few videos back. Just comment on the video, it gives you a chance to win a Christopher Bradley razor and brass and a box of goodies, soaps, aftershave bombs, stuff like that. I'm willing to ship all over the world. Yeah, it might cost me a bit of money, but that's perfectly fine, I, I don't mind that. Um, also, check out the Razorman podcast. Uh, by the time you're watching this, the new episode should be released with Michael Friedberg. So check over that. All the links to everything I said down below. Wherever you're on the world, have a wonderful day. My name is Jack, your host from the Virtual Grim Room. Goodbye for now.